water. It's El Paso's most valuable resource. Yet the water levels in our southwest desert community have been declining at an accelerating rate for a number of years. What is being done to conserve our precious water supply? Come along and you'll see. In the far northeast section of El Paso quietly stands one of the most unique facilities in the world, the Fred Hervey Water Reclamation Plant. It's named after the former mayor of El Paso, who created the Public Service Board and had the foresight to challenge the city to seek alternate water resources for the future needs of El Paso. Here in this $33 million plant, sewage is restored to drinking water using state-of-the-art technology. Before actually beginning this tour, some background information will help you understand why this facility is so important. El Paso currently depends on groundwater pumped from the Waco Bolson for about 60% of its water. Juarez, which has double the population of El Paso, also depends on water from the Waco Bolson. Expanding water service to adjacent residential and industrial developments adds to El Paso's water supply demand. Because El Paso is using groundwater faster than it is naturally replenished, we are gradually depleting the fresh water layer of the Waco Bolson. So what is being done about this problem? Well, if you live in the Northeast, all the wastewater from your shower, your kitchen, and your toilet is pumped here to the Fred Hervey Water Reclamation Plant. That's up to 10 million gallons of wastewater a day. As it arrives, notice its dirty color and texture. And as we progress through the plant, notice how the water changes. The first stage is called primary treatment. It consists of bar screens which remove such things as rags and large pieces of paper. A degrit chamber which removes sand and gravel that might damage our pumps. And then primary clarifiers which settle organic material called sludge. The debris from the bar screens and the sand and gravel from the degrit chamber are deposited on a conveyor belt and sent to a dumpster and eventually to a landfill. Think about the water you just saw. Now that it has no debris in it, it is much cleaner, but certainly not ready to drink. The sludge that settles to the bottom of the primary clarifiers is pumped into digesters. This starts a process we call anaerobic digestion. In this continuous process, the sludge remains in the digesters about 35 days before it overflows to a drying bed where it is dried and then hauled to a landfill. During the period that the sludge is being digested, certain gases are formed. The only gas that we are interested in is the methane which is taken off the top of the digesters in pipes. It is then sent to a generator in the carbon regeneration building where we can produce 13% of the electricity required by this plant. After primary treatment, the remaining stages of water treatment require that we have a stable flow. In the morning when people are showering and getting ready for work and school, this flow is very large. But late at night, the flow diminishes greatly. So what do we do? If there is too much flow, the excess is pumped into our equalization basin and we store it. Then at night, when there is very little flow, we'll take water from the equalization basin back into the rest of the plant. The equalization basin can overflow into three large ponds and water can still be recovered. The next two stages of water reclamation are part of the PACT process. PACT is a registered trademark that stands for Powdered Activated Carbon Treatment. What we do here is take the water that has been through the primary treatment and mix it with powdered activated carbon, which looks something like ground charcoal. Since virgin activated carbon is very expensive, an important feature of the PACT system is the ability to regenerate this carbon. 
This is done with regeneration equipment that allows the carbon to be used more than once. Look at the water. It's black. It seems to have gotten worse, but it hasn't. This is where our innovative concept of wastewater treatment begins. It is what gives this plant the ability to turn sewage water into drinking water. The regenerated carbon flows in at the base of the screw pumps from under the grating. It mixes with the wastewater and then is pumped to the aeration basin. This powdered activated carbon provides a surface for absorption of organic and inorganic contaminants and bacteria to grow on. Organisms, like bacteria, need water, food, and air to survive. They get water from the sewage and food from the organic matter it contains. In the first stage of the packed process, we provide the air which is forced through the water in these aeration basins. The biodegradable organic material from the sewage is consumed by the bacteria, and the non-biodegradable material is absorbed by the carbon. That's the beauty of the system. These are the first stage clarifiers. Basically, they operate in the same manner as the clarifiers from the primary treatment section. Water enters in the middle, where a circular weir traps the floating scum. The floating scum is then pushed into a scum pit and then pumped through the carbon regeneration system. The sludge settles to the bottom of these clarifiers and is returned to the aeration basin. This allows us to maintain a stable and uniform biological population. Is the water clean? It is. In fact, it's so clean that in the next stage, we need to feed methanol as a food source for bacteria of a different type to survive. In this second stage, water goes to the denitrification tanks, where the bacteria converts nitrates to nitrogen gas and carbon dioxide. After the denitrification tanks, the water goes to the stripping tanks, where the excess methanol, nitrogen gas, and carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere. Now you see the second stage clarifiers. They operate like the first stage clarifiers to recirculate the settled sludge. This ends our biological treatment of the water and our packed process. How do you think the water looks now? It looks nice and clean, doesn't it? One feature that makes the packed process effective is that it allows us a double protection against the breakthrough of contaminants. In other words, contaminants might break through the first stage, which uses regenerated carbon. But we add virgin carbon in the second stage, and it would be difficult for a breakthrough to occur. Even then, we are not satisfied. We have another carbon filter down the line that will absorb any additional contaminants. We make no assumptions about the treatment of the water. There is redundancy in treatment at all times. Up to this point, the treatment technology is similar to an advanced sewage treatment plant. At this point, we become a water treatment plant. Our first step is to use lime and coagulant. Why do we add lime? Because lime kills viruses and parasites and removes metals like copper and iron. Another benefit of using lime treatment is that it gets rid of over 80% of the phosphates such as those often found in laundry soap. Lime also reduces the alkalinity and hardness of the water. Right now you could not swim in or drink from this water. It is caustic and has a pH of 11. How do we bring the pH down from 11? We take liquid carbon dioxide and make it into a gas. Then we mix it with the water. This brings the pH down to 7.5, which is at a safe level for drinking water, and matches the pH of the water in the Waco Bolson. Although the water looks very clean, it is still not drinkable. After recarbonation, the water still has particles in it which we remove using sand filters. After the water passes through the sand filters, it is enclosed so it can't be exposed to the environment and get contaminated. 
Then the water passes through the ozone chamber for disinfection. Ozone, a form of oxygen, is one of the most powerful disinfecting agents available. What you see now are filters which use granulated activated carbon or GAC. As the water filters through the GAC, it is polished to a high quality. The GAC filters are a final treatment to ensure that any remaining contaminants are removed. The final step is to add a small amount of chlorine. Now, the water is drinkable. Next, the water is stored in one of three clear wells. Each one has a capacity of 3.3 million gallons. You can see that the water cleaning process is pretty extraordinary. This process, which usually takes 24 hours, results in safe, clean water that meets all drinking water standards. The water is then analyzed to ensure that it is of good quality. What happens next? About two miles west of the plant is the first of 10 injection wells where treated drinkable water is injected back into the ground. After about five years, the water reaches our production wells. The fact that the water is injected back into the bolson and goes through the sand before it is actually retrieved again affords us the added luxury of more treatment by natural processes and additional time to monitor and test it. We have an extensive process with quality and operational control systems. Our laboratory is very well equipped and does an extensive amount of testing. But if anything should happen and the computer senses that something is wrong or the laboratory sounds an alert that the water is not being treated to the required levels, there are several gates throughout the plant that will open automatically to divert the water back to the beginning. In addition, highly trained personnel are on site to monitor all systems 24 hours a day. What does this mean to the people of El Paso? Well, the average rate of fresh water consumption in El Paso is about 100 million gallons a day. Of all that water, the sewage treatment plants only get back about 50%. Actually, the single largest use of water is for watering yards. Only one half of 1% is used for drinking. Of the 50 million that we get back, the Fred Hervey Reclamation Plant only receives about 8 million. Of that 8 million gallons, we inject it all back into the bolson, except for what is used here at the plant. It has been projected that for every 10 years the plant performs at capacity, the life of the Waco bolson is extended one year. Additional conservation efforts include a commitment to supply three quarters of a million gallons of reclaimed water daily to the new Northeast Golf Course, plus other parks and golf courses in El Paso. Plans are also underway to use reclaimed water for industrial cooling purposes. All of us must recognize the need to conserve water and prepare for the future. The technology used at the Fred Hervey Water Reclamation Plant is unique and effective. This plant is a vital part of the Public Service Board's commitment to an effective water resource management plan and El Paso's future.